Justin, you're dreaming. You're out of touch. We don't want to go there. We're not following you on this. If you're out there watching, Google it now. You will see the Prime Minister is deliberately misinforming the House of Commons by stating that Canadians will be better off when clearly the average household will pay more than $1,500 more in taxes than they get back. Well, it's now clear why he wants to censor the internet, Mr. Speaker. And this is unbelievable. I can't believe I read it correctly. We will repeal this anti-speech censorship law and restore freedom of expression on the internet right across Canada. I know Canadians don't understand this, but let's say that the new media, which is the internet itself, was capable of producing some of the opposition to the globalists and Trudeau that the legacy media have abandoned. And I'm thinking of people like Russell Brand, who's on the left, and not to mention you know, any of the conservative commentators in the United States. And this is unbelievable. I can't believe I read it correctly, but it basically defined all internet content of any sort as subject to the same CRTC, Canadian R Radio and Television. They've defined them as broadcasters that are equivalent, let's say, to CBC or CTV. Now, the reason that those broadcasters are different was because the government had to parse up the airwaves because the airwaves were actually a scarce resource. Now, and the internet is not a scarce resource. And now, as far as I can tell, reading Bill C-11, which is an unbelievably vague document, if a internet service provider, a private one, so a small business person like me, let's say, doesn't broadcast in French and English ah. and in indigenous languages and to any diverse range of people with disabilities oh. and highlight Canadian content, then the government can do what it needs to do to deprioritize their distribution. And they'll do that by putting pressure on search engine providers like YouTube and Google yeah. or just stopping them altogether. And yeah. I read this bill and all of it again, Rex, too, the bill is couched in all this diversity, inclusivity and equity terminology, which it's the same solution to every problem, right? And so not only do we have this massive press collusion with the government that's absolutely unconscionable in a Western democracy, but we also have now the government clamping down more viciously than in any other developed country on the freedom for Canadians to get access to all of the information on the internet, not just that produced by Canadians. They hand wave about diversity, inclusivity, equity, the environment, and then in Bill C-11, they add the protection of the Canadian culture to that, and which sounds like something taken out of like 1979 or 1980. It's such an outdated idea. And one of the other terror, terrifying things about Bill C-11 is that we won't in Canada, if this is actually enforced with the collusion, let's say, of Google and YouTube and so forth, and the, the forced collusion in some sense, because those companies are not going to break the law, Canadians won't even know what information is being hidden from them because the laws will take the form of invisible algorithms that merely deprioritize at the listing of content that doesn't meet the impossible criteria that have been laid down. And Bill C-11 is basically written in a way that allows the government to interfere with the promulgation of any information that they deem unacceptable for any reason. Because there are so many restrictions on what you're allowed to do now that there's no possible way that, that any member of the alternative media can meet the criteria. It's just not possible. And it won't just be YouTube broadcasters and podcasters. It's going to be people who provide all sorts of services online because the bill is written in such a vast manner. The provision of any services on the internet, and we're talking about the internet here, right, which is something people really depend on, that that'll all fall under the invisible auspices of a tiny coterie of ideologically addled bureaucrats and algorithms. It's absurd, but it's more than that. This is truly frightening. I mean, what is this gulping for p more power than you need? Well, it's the imposition of an ideology. And go back to your China point. Here's the reason that he may really admire China, because China, it happens to be communism in that case. China is fired only, as was Russia, by an ideology, by a set of narrow ideas from which no deviation, no criticism, under penalty of exile or death is allowed. Not as hard over here, but DIE is an ideology. An ideology makes those claims 
and fills those who hold it with a completely, a completely unacceptable level of moral certitude, not certainty. Bill C-11 is a disaster. And one more quick point. It is shameful. It is shameful to the essence that the main, main Canadian press are not as one voice and a one intense voice saying, we're not having this. We are simply not having this. You are not going to rule on what is information and not information. You are not going to rule on the presence of citizens on the new channels of communication. And seeing you've already fouled the official or legacy means to some serious degree, we're certainly not going to allow you to put a pillow over the mouth of the only possible new exchanges that we have. It's a terrible idea. And I, apart from arrogance, righteousness, and the belief in a, his own infallibility, I can't see why. But Mario, why aren't the MPs even in his own party saying, Justin, you're dreaming. You're out of touch. We don't want to go there. We're not following you on this. Where's the courage in any of these caucuses?